YouTube. Welcome back to Urban Outdoors. Hey, I'm Urban, but you knew that, didn't you? Guys, today's video is in response to a video that was recently done by Eat Carbs Outdoors channel. And guys, if you haven't checked out Eat Carbs Outdoors, I'll put it right here. Eat Carbs Outdoors. His channel is all about everything outdoors. Nothing specific, a lot like mine. All things related to the outdoors and things that he enjoys. I mean, why else make YouTube videos if not for your own enjoyment, right? That's why I do it. But he did an awesome video, I believe it was yesterday. And he invited everyone to make their own video regarding the same topic. And that is backup fire kits or just fire kits in general so I'm gonna call mine my uh, go-to fire kit and the one I'm gonna share with you today is this one right here and you can see it says in rooms right there fire and this is a pouch that I made myself as you can tell it does have a belt loop in it and it is just a canvas uh, pouch, very easy to make. Um, you can tell by the, the stitching that it wasn't professionally done. But uh, it is held up. I made this kit probably, what, 12 years ago. Yeah, 12 years ago. So it's held up fine. It's not the prettiest thing in the world. But hey, all it is is a pouch. It's what's inside that's really important. But I call this my go-to fire kit because it's not just a lighter. Which, by the way, I always have in my pocket. If I'm awake, I have a lighter in my pocket. Alright? If I'm alive and breathing, I have a lighter in my pocket. And... A lighter will always be my first attempt at making fire. That's just me. Since this is my go-to fire kit, and my most extensive fire kit, I consider that a fire kit that I would really need to fall back on if I was in a desperate situation and needed to start a fire. Now, every bag and every kit that I have has a small fire kit in it with at least two, usually three, ignition sources. But, that being said, this one I keep in my get home bag because that is the bag that I feel would be the most important for me to actually survive any situation extreme or otherwise so that's why this bag stays in my get home bag which stays in my truck I'm gonna open this up now and show you the contents of my little homemade fire kit open it up over on the left hand side there's a, a baggie and you open that up I need to refill it some but uh, you'll see it says fat wood shavings and that's exactly what that is these are very very fine fat wood shavings you can see how fine they are and uh, Man, I love the smell of fat wood. I love the smell of fat wood in the morning. But yeah, that's the first thing that's in there to help me get a fire started if I have to use a ferro rod or, or anything, really. Alright, the next thing is this metal tin. You can see it's got tape on it. It's a copper tin. And, uh... I've got some tape on there to help keep it closed. Electrical tape. 
but when you open it up, you'll see quite a few items. Look, a little piece of that would just fell out. So what I'm going to do now is take this kit and go over the items in there. I'm just going to pull them out one by one in no order, just whatever comes out next, and share it with you. And I hope this is coming through on my secondary camera. You'll see, in addition to the fatwood shavings, I do have several pieces of fatwood. And the, what you can do with these is you can light one end of it until you get it going. Or if I needed more shavings or some feather sticks I could use to do this. But one thing I've found with the fatwood sticks is that with a lighter or with a uh, already ignited flame, you can just hold this into the flame, get it going good, stack up a couple of them, and that'll keep you burning for a long time while you can add other things to get a bigger fire started. So, that would, great thing to have in a kit. Regarding tinder, also, I have this little bag this little uh, Ziploc bag and it is full it's got seven Vaseline soaked cotton balls now this is my favorite way to start a fire I've said that in many videos and this little pouch will start a lot of fires okay so if I don't have the fatwood shavings Actually, this would be my first go-to. I would go to this first because I know no trial and error, one and done, it's going to start. And with the Vaseline, again, it'll burn long enough to add other things and get a bigger fire going. Also, regarding fire tinder, I have a couple of, I have a couple of these little things. These are just little fuel cubes, similar to the cotton balls. I don't know what company made these because I've had them forever. But basically what you would do with these is, uh, just like with the cotton balls, you would open it up, fluff it. It's coated in some type of wax that has a long burn time, kind of like the s cubes, I guess. Also, in regards of tender... You know they say in survival one is none, two is one. Well, I like to have two, which is actually three. Quick fire. Lights any fire fast. This stuff, guys, is uh, it's almost like a little powder. I've done a video on these before. Uh, you can scroll through my videos and... Uh, Check out that. Yeah, I could put a card up here, but I really want you to scroll through my older videos. This stuff works great, guys. Again, catches a spark with a ferro rod real easy. You can use a lighter. All right, so regarding tinder or ways to get a fire started, I've got the quick fire. I've got the s -bit cube things. I've got the Vaseline-soaked cotton balls. I've got the very fine fatwood shavings, and I've got some pieces of fatwood. So, that stuff does you no good if you don't have an ignition source, right? That's what you'll find remaining here in the kit. Ignition sources. So, I'm just going to reach in and grab whatever comes first, and we'll take a look at it and talk about it a bit. First thing I have right here in this aluminum foil you'll see if I pull one out this is a Zippo okay storm match and again I've done video I've done a video on the Zippo storm match uh, you can go search for that not right now though wait until this video is over but these things are awesome so I've got three of those that I keep in the aluminum foil. That's just to protect the coating on there from getting scraped off when it's in this uh, 
in the tin or anything like that. So the aluminum foil just kind of protects the coating of the matches. But also, I could unroll this aluminum foil and it's about two feet. If the ground is really wet, I could roll out that uh, aluminum foil and I have a dry surface to start my fire on. Hey guys, I didn't realize until I was editing uh, that I forgot to mention on the inside of this plate here, on the inside of the tin, that little circle, that is the strike plate for the Zippo matches. Uh, the next thing I'm just going to grab, I've got one of these. You can see this is just a Ferrocium rod, and it does have a Ferro striker there on it. And it's been used a little bit. I'm not too crazy about the magnesium stuff, although if you can scrape off a good bit of it, it will create a very hot spark. But the uh, you got the uh, ferro rod on there, and you can see it throws sparks. Kind of a two-in-one deal there. You just scrape the magnesium off on one side. You can use the back of your knife blade to do that. Get a little pile up and then just strike it uh, with your the back of your knife. Now I have this little knife in this kit as well. Um, it's a lock blade too, which I like. So it's not going to fold down on me when I'm trying to strike. Um, and it stays in the, in the kit as well. So... Magnesium with the ferro rod. I have another little ferro rod in here that I just put on a little, put a little, if I wanted to put this around a necklace I could. Um, but it's a pretty thick ferro rod, but it's very short, so I put some duct tape on there. You can see the duct tape just holds the little lanyard on, but it also gives me a better whole surface to hold when I go to actually scrape and get my sparks. Well, I don't want to set my bandana on fire. But again, a duplicate ferro rod. Um, and again, the little knife that I keep in here has got a nice 90 degree edge. So it, it puts out sparks really good. So, uh, the next thing I've got in here, and I don't know if you've seen these before or not, but this is a pretty cool little thing. It's called a flint match. And the way it works is you just unscrew this little thing here. And this is a little striker. And on the inside here, you can see kind of recessed. I hope that's coming out well. Set down underneath the surface of this. Inside there is a little teeny mini ferro rod. And you got a little mini striker there. And you just simply take it, and you can see, I hope you can see good, but that thing throws pretty good sparks, y'all. And then when you're done, you just put that back in there. But yeah, pretty cool, a little flint match. Um, also, I have another backup striker in there. This is just one of those Coglins. Um, scrapers. Um, I use this part up here because it's got like a little lip on it. So when you go down, it, it really grips good. But it has this too if I wanted to use it to scrape some of the magnesium on this. I believe that this came with this actually. It came like that. I since lost the lanyard, but anyway. So I keep that extra striker in there. Then I got this little jeweler's loop here. And this is a pretty thick uh, magnifying glass. It's 10 power magnification, so it's, it's very strong. But it is kind of small. But it fits in the can perfect. And then last, and for, last of course, I have another lighter. Now this one I chose a clipper lighter. I like the clippers. Um, they work well and again I've got it wrapped in more duct tape. It's got a little lanyard here. So again if I wanted to put that around my neck. 
but I like the clippers because they're reusable um, you can refill them with butane and just like with the Bix if you do run out of fluid and you don't have a way to refill it you can just use the sparks that it puts out with the cotton balls to get a fire started in this kit this would be the first thing I grab and as you can see when it's packed back up everything fits in there nice and neat plenty of sources to start a fire again I keep the tape on the sides there to keep it secure it doesn't rattle around a lot because everything is so snug and tight in there and again I just stick it back in the pouch I roll up my fat wood shavings and stick it down in the side there so you can see everything fits in there nice and tight all right so there you go again guys if you haven't checked out eat carbs outdoors I recommend you go do it he's got a great channel if you like anything related to the outdoors you'll like his channel I've decided that when I hit 2,000 subscribers I'm gonna do a pretty awesome giveaway so if you're if you're still around and you stuck with me on this video this far be on the lookout for a giveaway. I'm not going to talk a lot about it until it actually happens. At the point of making this video, I am at 18, 17 subscribers. When I get to 2,000, I'm going to do a giveaway with some pretty good prizes. Just to show my appreciation for all of you. If you have subscribed to my channel, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I really mean it. YouTube is a great time-consuming hobby that I thoroughly enjoy not not working it gives me something to do and uh, I really enjoy it and uh, hey if you like this video give me a thumbs up and be sure to share so we can get those extra to almost 200 subscribers so I can do the giveaway I'd love to have by the end of the year 2,000 subscribers and I think that it's very possible but I need your help. So, I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Till next time, keep calm, carry on, and keep it outdoors.